Hi guys and welcome back to NodeFlow. Today we'll see together how to create a snow simulation in Houdini. We will continue our journey using Vellum. This is the fifth video of the Vellum 101 series. If you haven't seen the other ones, I strongly recommend you to go and watch them before this one because we will treat more advanced concepts today. We'll see how to create it, how to clean it up and how to render it in Solaris. So join me and let's start. In Udini, I will start with a Geonode as usual and I will change his name to be Velum05. I will then save my scene. Inside I will start with a sphere. I want to add some more rows and columns here and I want to change its center to be 4 on Y so it gets a little bit moved up and the uniform scale to be 1.5. Now we can add some noise as this will be our snow. I will leave the mountain as default and I will create a rubber toy that will be our collision mesh. I will change it to be 1.5 up in the Y direction and then I will create a transform node as I want to animate the rotation of the rubber toy. Here I will write a simple expression $FF that means that I will read the current frame you see if I spin this one because this is changing also this one is changing and because it's too slow for my taste I will also multiply it by 6. If when you play back you actually see it very fast that's because you need to check this toggle here that means real time toggle. So let's now create the Vellum grains constraints. I'm looking for the Vellum configure grain. We can now plug it in, the collisions into the collisions and the geometry into the geometry and we can start setting up our simulation. I want to check create points from volume that will create some points also inside of our mesh and I want to change the particle size to be 0.03. I can now create a solver, Vellum solver. I will plug everything in and I want to change some settings. I want to enable the ground position and then I want to change the subsets to 10. In the forces I will change the friction dynamic scale to 2 that means that the, the snow will actually slide a little bit less around when it touches the other objects. Into the advanced tab, I want to change the grain collisions and I want to enable the attraction weight to 1. We can now press play and see what's happening. So as you can see, there is a force holding these grains together and this is actually the attraction weight that we set up here. So because of that, we'll use this property and we will change it in order to make it behave a little bit more realistic. So because we want to randomize the attraction weight, let's actually create some attribute noise. I will change it to be attraction weight, I will change it to be a float and I will visualize it. Let's plug it in. So if you see different colors, it's because I clicked here with control and middle mouse and then control and click here. And you see, I change it to be a rampant attribute and then change the color ramp to be from green to red. I want a alligator noise and I will change the amplitude to be 5.55. In the post process, I will limit it to be from 0.1 to 1, in that way we don't have values that are 0. And then into the warping, this one will be minus 0.4. In the size, I will set it to be 3.53. And lastly, I will change the element size to half, 55, I think it's fine. And then into the rim of ramp, we can give it a little bit more contrast by moving the ramp something over here. That's perfect, as you can see, we already have some patches. I can now duplicate this, plug it in. And the only thing I need to change is the element size to be 1.5. 21. In that way we have a different we have a different scale, but they still look a little bit too uniform. So I will duplicate a third time. This time I will set the operation to subtract. So we can actually we can start removing some attraction weight. I will change the amplitude to be 2.13, the element size to 0.5. And because they are overlapping right now, I will change the offset a little bit so we can have a little bit more variety. I found that a value that 2.9 worked for me. Now that I have some nice randomization, we can start caching out our first simulation. So I'll create a file cache, let's plug it in and let's see how to set it up. I will change the file path to be explicit and I want to control shift and click here and then change this one to 99. And then here you, you can choose where to save it. Although before caching out, we want to uppress the simulation to be 0.013 over here in the volume grains. And now we can save to disk. So I have my simulation and now that it's high res, we can see it better. I think it's starting to look very cool. As you can see, after the simulation, we have lots of attributes that we don't really need. So I'll create an attribute delete and clean this up. I will check the lead non selected, but I want to save the P scale and the attraction weight. I will then create an attribute rename because I want to change the name of the attraction weight to be density. So I'll write here attraction weight and I will choose it to be density over here. This is essential as we're now going to create a volume with the volume rasterize attributes. By default your C is not really working, so we need to change the attributes to be density over here. Now we start seeing something. We now need to change the coverage scale to something like 30. 
and it's already looking better, although the voxel size is pretty small. I could write here the same one, 0 0.013, but instead of doing that, let's actually reference that parameter. So over here, I will right click and copy parameter. And here again, I will select this one, right click and paste relative preference. So you can see now the value is correct and it's already starting to look way better. I will check this normalize. And lastly, I want to clean it a little bit. In this stage, when there are actually still some points, I will create a blast node and I will connect it here. I want to delete some points and I will check it here. I will now select all of these points that are going outside to make the simulation look better. And then I can go closer and start removing some of these points. Once you have it, it should look something like this. And then you can just confirm it by pressing enter into the viewport. I want to prepare my toy for Solaris. So for now, we'll create a simple color node. I will also disable the shader and something for that, like now, is pretty fine. I will then create a grid. I will also give it the gray color, create a name attribute. I will plug it in and I want the name to be the same name of the node itself. So I'll write $OS and I will change this name to be toy. Then I can duplicate it, paste it here. And in this case, it will be called floor. We can now create a merge, connect this to in and a node that we can call out just for being tidy. So make sure to save and to visualize this node is pretty important before we go into Solaris. And then let's create a lock net. Inside, I want to import my volume. So I'll create volume node. And right here, I want to paste the same one that I have in my file cache. So I will copy this one and let's paste it. And in this way, you should see a volume over here. And now we can create a SOP import. I will name it toy. And I want to find my toy over here. I will do the same for the floor. Now that we have all three of them, we can create a merge node, plug everything in. And I want to name my volume to be snow. In this way, it will be easier to reference it. Although we don't see the classic outliner here of Solaris, that's because we need to be in the Solaris workspace. So let's go out. Let's change it to be Solaris. And if it brings you to the stage, you can just go back to the object level, go inside and then into the lock net again. Space G into the viewport. And now we can see the outliner over here. We want to assign some materials to all of this. So let's create a material library. A recent thing I noticed is that we're now going to create a node called XPU Pyro Preview. And if you go inside and try to create it, it happened to me that I was able to create it before, but now it looks like I cannot. So if that happens to you too, you need to delete all of this and leave just a star, that means everything. So let's go inside. And now you can see if we write XPU, we have it, XPU Pyro Preview, that's amazing. And now we can name it Snow Pyro. Before changing anything over here, I will make sure to assign it. So I will autofill materials and assign it to geometry. By dragging and dropping my Snow volume over here, we have it correctly assigned. I will move to a litter frame, something like 84. And then I want to add some lights. So I'll create a dome light. Everything is default. The only thing I've done is actually download an HDRI from Polyhaven. I will leave the link in the description. They have lots of free HDRI. It's a very great resource. Now we can save and then Karma XPO. As we see, the material should be correctly assigned. Now we can tweak it to make it better. Let's try to tweak the density. For me, the values that worked were, were a density of 15 and the shadow density of 0 0.14. I actually didn't like that the snow was quite gray as it should reflect some colors from the sky. I changed the shadow color to be something somewhat bluish. And lastly, I played with smoke color and I bumped it up to something like 1.4. It gave it a little bit more of this burned out look and I kind of liked it because it resembled a little bit more uh, snow. So I will leave it to 1.4. So I've now created a camera over here. We can visualize it by going here. And in the camera render settings, I, the only things I changed was the resolution to be 1920 by 1080 and the render engine to be XPU. And in the camera effects, I've also disabled the depth of field. The last thing I want to do here in the camera render settings is actually choose where to save my animation over here and define my camera to be camera one, the one that I've created over here. Then in the rope, we can change it the we can change the render delegate to be XPU. And then we can just define the range to be from one to 99 and then render to disk. So if you followed along correctly, you should have a result that looks somewhat like that. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I have some more surprises coming along for the Vedon series. I'm really enjoying doing it so far. Also, the response from the community has been quite amazing. So subscribe if you haven't. It really, really helps and it motivates me to create higher quality tutorial and to create more videos per week. So I guess I'll see you in the next one.